Hello everyone, my name is Corazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. We are back in the world on a very windy day. I had to hold my pickaxe because otherwise I'd be doing this, and waving like this is really funny looking. Not much of a wave, is it? Anyway, we are hot on the heels of last episode. I've kind of stopped doing a lot of prep between episodes because I'm doing a lot with you guys. But last episode we put together this room and we did the whole room's basic structure, and then we started on some of the detail work. And this episode is going to be a continuation of that, as well as some details around the base. I want to fix this thing. I want to fix these bookshelves. I have something in mind for a railing up here. And there's also a super secret project that I got some materials for last time, which would be this white marble rock and this slate rock, but I didn't do anything with it. So, in this episode, and my frame rate is getting choppy, so I'm going to restart here in a minute, but this episode is going to be all about getting some details in so that our newest living spaces are feeling more like living spaces and less like works in progress. Okay, game is restarted, and frame rate is quite a bit smoother, at least on my end. Before we get started, though, I did want to go ahead and plant a bunch of papyrus around because although we now have a full apiary with all of our skeps at least populated, and a couple, I think, with honey, one and two, we don't have any more papyrus coming our way. And so I was thinking it was time to plant some, and I'm probably going to do it down there. Might harvest those fields, and I might even plant a few up here, just for grins and giggles. Although there isn't much space up here. I might put some down there eventually, but today... Yeah, I think today we're just going to plant them down in the valley below. And there we go. That's progress right there. I was going to plant over these fields, but I still don't have quite enough to do with 16,000 pineapples, so I'm going to leave them for now. And I am tempted to harvest these bamboo, but you've seen me do that before, so I won't do that on screen. I might not even do it today. We have plenty of bamboo at the moment, although getting saplings might be nice. So we'll see. I might do that before we get started here. I think I will. And I'll bring you all back when that is done and we are ready to get some detail work done. So I'm just up here minding my business, cutting trees down, getting seeds and stuff for our eventual jungle. I spy a temporal storm on the horizon. And this is going to be the first one that we've had at our base since we built the Drifter Grinder. So I think before we get started on our chiseling, I think it's time that we should go and test out how well our grinder works, whether it saves us whether it's frustrating. I'm going to guess a mix of both, but that's going to be for the morning, or I guess very early in the morning, and I'll meet y'all over there once I am prepared. Let's do this. Okay, here we go. As usual, if you have any motion sickness issues, you might want to close your eyes and listen for the awful sounds to be over. Here we go. And I am wearing the steel full plate just for now, because just in case something goes horribly wrong, I would like to be able to defend myself, so that is the goal here. And boy, this sounds terrible. Wow. Okay, well, I'm going to hang out here and wait until we get some drifters in here, and we're going to see how well this does. There's one. Hello, corrupt drifter. Can you hit me from there? 
I'm almost gonna say no. Did you kill him for me? Oh, you jerk. Mangled body. Must have been killed by a vile creature. That's new. Okay. Weird. Okay, well, so far so good. Interesting that these guys can't hit me. But I realized something. I made these spears, but I can't... Well, aside from the fact that I can't throw these effectively right now, I can pick them up. Interesting. It is very slow to throw these. Ugh. My goodness. I think if a spear lands on the far side of the block, though, or maybe on the bony soil, I think I may have trouble picking it up. Like there. So I was thinking it might make sense to actually take out some of these guys. And, oh, well, they can hit me. Never mind. So I don't like this design too, too much as far as that aspect is concerned. I might just smack with my sword for now. Hey, guys. Now, uh, he seems to be taking pot shots at me with his thing. I don't know. I heard the sort of whoosh of the attack, but didn't really see anything happen. So I think I'm already seeing some changes I would like to make. And one of them is one that I saw uh, about a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, where it might be good to make a staircase down below here and make this one unified pit area and then create basically a grate that the drifters would fall on and that I can attack them through upward with a spear or even with a sword, like so. And they will typically have trouble attacking downward, even with stones, especially with a grate that they can't throw the stones through. And that might help alleviate some of these weird issues where I can't get them with a spear because... Well, I can, but I can't pick the spear up if it hits the far wall, and so on. So I think that would be the game plan. And, hello, buddy. Before this started, I already did have a couple of the crawlers pop down here, and they cannot get through here. But they can throw stones, and they do have a better chance of actually smacking you like this, but since I think crawlers stop at the tainted level, I don't think I've seen corrupted or nightmare or double-headed crawlers, I don't know that that's an issue. Hey, buddy. Anyway, I think the evaluation of this is going to be like a C plus B minus. It works. It's got some kinks to iron out. And I'm not going to work on that today, but at some point we will want to make this a little more effective. Plus, I think that by having our staircase or our sort of chilling pit down below here, we might be able to attract more of them into the center by having us be right in the middle of this whole thing. Anyway, I'm going to write out the rest of this storm and see if we get anything else good. I did see a little buddy back there. It looked like it might have been a double-headed. But I'll bring you all back when we are ready to start our chiseling. All right, we are back, and we are ready to rumble. So, before we get to the main course today, which is kind of going to be this whole area and room down here, I wanted to address a couple of things that I've been meaning to do for a couple episodes. And one is I want to dress up this guy a little bit, and I also want to fix these bookshelves a bit, although the unfortunate thing is that by chiseling them, you're going to lose this nice, attractive corner here. So, a bit of a shame, but... I'm sure we'll survive. So let's go ahead and get these two done and get these looking nice. There we go. I think that looks like a much better pot leaf, apparently. Okay, I swear that was unintentional. That 
Whoops. I, I stand by it. It just... Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> so yes, anyway, this looks like a much nicer um, lotus blossom or something. Now that it has a bit of a bit of a beveled edge to it. Or I guess not. Is it a boss or a relief? I'm sure one of you in the comments can tell me what kind of edge this is. I think beveled isn't quite the word. The inverse bevel? Anyway, I think it's time to get started on this room in general. And that's what we're going to do today. And that does mean that we should probably go and check out our bees. Because if we have any more to harvest, we should do that right away. And I got off of the wrong floor. Stupid staircase. Or stupid me, which, whichever. So let's go see how much honey we have. We have one, two, three, four ready. Yeah, sure, we'll go ahead and do it. Yep, whatever, guys. You just go and do your thing. Ignore me. Oh, hey, check it out. Our bamboo in here has sprouted. I was kind of hoping for more right here, but that's okay. Look at that. And we have peanuts and onions. Cool. Not too shabby, I'd say. Well, I'm going to go and squeeze out this honey and get us some candles and get that process started. And I'll bring y'all back when we are ready to continue working on the room. I also should go and replace those skeps, too. And here we are with our first four candles. There we go. And that will eventually take the place of these torches. And I do kind of like the look of this, so maybe we'll find something else to put up in here. I don't know yet. So as far as things that we want to do up here, we do want to make a sink. We want to make some cabinetry. And in this case, functional cabinetry. So I'll get on that. And then... Yeah, ooh, knives for the knife rack, of course. How could I forget? But also, we do need something here to keep us from falling off when we come stumbling out of bed in the morning. So I want to get something together for this. And I think I know just about what I want to do for it. So let's get you down. And we will chop all of you back. Alright, well, I'm going to go ahead and get started on the changes to this room. And while I'm doing that, I have a bunch of 20 questions you guys have submitted. And so it is time for me to get to answering them. Enjoy! Hey, hey, everyone. It's that time again. It's time for 20 questions. You sent in some interesting questions, and it's time to answer them. Let's get started. Our first two questions are from Midori Mushrooms. First question is, do you like pineapple on pizza? What's your favorite pizza topping? You know, I didn't like pineapple on pizza for the longest time. In the past year or so, though, I've started to enjoy it with ham on pizza, and it might actually be one of my favorite toppings, nowadays at least. Though, I'd have to put it up there with prosciutto on pizza, something I found super delicious when I was on a trip in Venice. The second question is, have you ever played in or wanted to play in a PBTA game? If so, what are your thoughts? PBTA? Uh, no. I've never played a Pittsburgh Business Travel Association game, so I can't really say I have any thoughts on it. Our second question is from Penuman Visa. If you could add something cosmetic, like for interior decorating, but that wasn't for chiseling, what would it be? I think I would like to see cloth curtains. They would be visual barriers, but would allow the player to pass through them, and bonus points if they also swish slightly open when you pass by. They would be able to be opened and closed by the player to shut the curtains on drifters trying to wave at us through the window, and it should be possible to take the curtains down off the rod and return them as cloth. Our next question is from Bogdan. What vintage story mod would you like to see? I'm not huge into modded play, in case it wasn't very obvious by the modest list of mods. However, I can say that one mod, or vanilla feature if it would make more sense, would be to have a replay mod. I would love to be able to use a replay mod so I could record a build, then go back and film it from another angle. It would be great for cinematic openings and stuff too. Our next question is from Alktree. 
I presume you don't use thatch much due to it not fitting the general run of your designs. Thatch has a certain aesthetic to it that really works well for building the abodes and businesses of the medieval peasantry and the merchant class. I haven't built much of that kind of building, but I think I also generally avoid thatch for two main reasons. One, it is a very noisy texture and stands out quite starkly. Bamboo has the same problem. In fact, bamboo, roofing, and thatch also share the other reason I tend to avoid it. It's rather work intensive to gather enough grass or bamboo pieces to make each roof block. And especially for thatch, that means wearing through a ton of durability on knives or scythes. Our next question is from Laney. What is the farthest you've had to travel in game to locate a single resource aside from exotic crops? I think right now, Bauxite takes first place for this. We had to go over 10,000 blocks from Lupine Ridge to find it. Sure, it was through a double set of translocators, but that's how far away we ended up. There's probably Bauxite closer, we just never found it. Our next question is from Aesthetic Jonas. Favorite Zelda game? Skyward Sword, hands down. I know some people had problems with the Wiimote for controlling the sword, but I thought it was an excellent implementation of the motion controls and the game itself was a ton of fun. I especially loved the dungeon designs, which Zelda games don't always have great dungeon design, even if the game itself is fun. Sometimes the dungeons are interesting, but they're made too obvious. I feel like the challenge of the Skyward Sword dungeons, sort of, they were enough to make you think, but not to the point of getting frustrated. Our next question is from Pineberry212. Regarding the roadmap about multi-block transportation, do you think it would work like Space Engineers with its independent grid system for ships? What do you think it would look like? I would hope that multi-block transportation would allow us to create voxel grids independent of the world's voxels. There is a mod for the other block game called Create, and this might be a pretty good model for how to implement it in Vintage Story. Also, Quentin is working on his QP tech mod to create things that move, including minecarts and other mobile blocks. You should check out the trailers and demos on YouTube. Our next question is from Redneck Woman. Are you interested in archaeology? If so, what is your favorite time period for study? I'm definitely interested in that if I happen across an article about a new discovery, I'll usually read it, or sometimes I'll go on a Wikipedia link adventure. I don't think I'd actually want to be an archaeologist, though, and I don't study it, per se. Too much digging through dirt, and probably a lot of letdowns when modern societies pave over significant archaeological sites, or when people and museums loot them. As for a favorite time period, I don't think I really have one. Humans of every era, including our own, are interesting, amazing, weird, brilliant, and stupid, all at once. Pick any human society that we understand to a reasonable amount of detail, and you'll find interesting culture and food, amazing or appalling traditions, wild philosophies and science, stunning architecture, and... Eggplant drawings. Yep, eggplant drawings. And then you can look closer and see the things that are totally mundane. A receipt in cuneiform on a clay tablet. A simple jug for storing wine. Drawings of... Ah, oh, it's the eggplants again. Eggplants, all over Roman Greece. Will our descendants one day dig up our remains and gawk and wonder at a 14-foot CVS receipt for a pack of gum and two tubes of chapstick? What will they think of our wine bottles? What conclusions will they draw from a 7th grader's cool S they scribbled all over their math notes? Will the society have finally gotten over its obsession with, um, eggplants? Nah, not on that last one at least. Our last question today is from Sergeant Psycho. Who gave you a military mindset? I hear certain phrases in some of your comments. I'm not sure what you mean about a military mindset, since I'm definitely not in the military. But I do have friends who are or were in the military, and I did do some contract work that involved the military a while back. I do tend to prefer a 24-hour clock, which I grew accustomed to a long time ago when I spent a year in Europe, so I may sometimes say things like 1300 hours to mean 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Let me know if that's what you're asking about. Well, everyone, that is all we have for today's 20 questions segment. Thanks for submitting such fun questions. If you are inspired to submit your own, you can drop it in a comment with the hashtag 20 questions or post it in the 20 questions channel over in the Gaming with Corazar Discord server. Now let's get back to what we were doing. Okay, we are taking a break to refill on food because we are just about out. So, we're going to go ahead and do that. Mm. 
then we're going to come get just a little bit of this pink marble to bring back with us. And then we're going to head down here. I know, weird place. And we're going to take a core sample to find out if we have any... Any of that per... Any per... Any per... per I can't say it. The green stone. Because I would like a little bit of that green stone to work with down here. Or up there, as it were. So we're going to see what lies below here. Nope. No green rock. But look at that stability. It is creeping backward ever so slightly. If we were to go up to like 10, we could build a base here. Crazy or what? Well, we do have andesite and we do have phyllite, but none of the green rock. So I'm going to make a real quick trip out to our quarry, or actually our basalt quarry, because right next to it is some of that green rock. And I will be right back. Okay, so I wasn't going to record any of this mining session, and I haven't, not going to still, but I wanted to show you what a treasure trove we hit. I decided that instead of going all the way down to here, I would try and dig farther down at our first quarry with sandstone and bauxite and see what lay beneath. So we knew already we had the sandstone, the bauxite, and then the granite, and I came down here and I could go no further because I don't have a steel pickaxe with me. In fact, I grabbed this copper one from a tool vessel in a ruin along the way here. So I went out to find the edge of it, and I kept going down, where we did indeed find the... 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 the, the green stone. The green stone. But that wasn't all, because I kept going down, and I found this deposit. Well, with the Propic, I was able to find that there is gold in here, right here. So that's pretty cool. And then I kept going down. And we hit olivine and a whole bunch of peridot, which is amazing. So that's cool. And then I kept going down, found copper, found more copper, and then finally hit the bottom. And here's where I've been collecting some of the green stone. So, yeah, we already go back. I just wanted to point this out of how crazy lucky a find this was. I am glad I dug here. Alright, see you at home. Okay, everyone, we are back. And I think it's time that we get all of this little kitchen area here finished up. Let's get to it.
Okay, and to finish everything off here, we have a herring knife. Let me move you up a little bit. It's kind of hard to see against the bauxite, though. Oh well. We also have a big cleaver and a pair of kitchen shears. Maybe next time I'll make this out of tin bronze or something. But yes, this here is our little breakfast room. And aside from the cleanup of this box here, and the addition of candles, of which I did get five more, so this one is fully fleshed out. I guess I can remove this, can't I? The candles are on their way. Everything else is ready to go. And I'm not quite sure what to do about the center here, because I do think this might still be a breeding ground for grifters. Although once we get the other candles down here a bit farther, that might provide enough light. I could also sort of, I don't know, maybe put a second table here and drop some candles on. I'm not sure yet, but for now, light. And that brings us to one of the last touch-ups I want to do today, is that we need to copy these guys so that we can then forget them in the table. There we go. And we can put them over this door right here. So you there, and you there, and then... There we go. So we will want to redo this frame, but because of the new rules where you cannot extend slabs beyond their original dimensions, we will have to do that by hand. But I'm going to get to that later once I figure out what else is going to happen in this hallway, because I might not be using the sandstone bricks for the edges here. I really don't know yet. That being said, there is one more project I've been hinting at for like two episodes. That is a little chisel project that I want to put right here. Probably right there. Let me go ahead and I'm just going to get this started. And if you have any guesses about what it is, put it in the comments. Alright everyone, if you guessed that our chisel project out here was going to be a bumblebee, then you were 110% correct. Now there is just one more thing we need to do. We need to give this bee a name, because right now it is named Basalt Rock. And that is a travesty. So, we are naming our bee, in caps apparently, Michael, and of course... Michael Bumble, the singing bee. There he is right there. That's right, everyone, Michael Bumble. Gorgeous. Look at those big eyes. Oh, you know what I should do? I should add a bit of a shine to those eyes, shouldn't I? I could probably use some more of the marble for that. Let's go ahead and add some marble in. And then maybe, let's see, oops, wrong button. I do. 
that give him a little more life? I think it does. Maybe even make that little bit of shine on his eyes from the light coming from two different directions, of course. There we go. Isn't he cute? That's right. And these wings are definitely not even, but boy is it hard to see glass when you're chiseling it. It is so ghostly. But there is Michael Boomblay on his little marble pedestal. <laughs> Michael Boomblay. Well, everyone, that is about all we have time for in this episode of the Vintage Story Guide. I hope you enjoyed our detailing of parts of the base and building out the kitchenette, and of course, the Michael Boomblay statue. I'm undecided about what to do next episode, whether we should go for an adventure or whether we should continue working on the house, but look forward to whatever I come up with for the next episode. If you have any AMA questions you want me to answer in a video, drop them in a comment with the hashtag 20 questions, or post them in the 20 questions Discord channel. Social and support links, including the Discord invite, are in the video description. As always, my name has been Corazar. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.